Hey guys, I'm Austin LaFar and I'm with my two buddies, Jeremy Wegman and LT. And we're on the road heading to West Virginia for some serious wheeling. We're on a 500 mile journey to the heart of coal country in Southern West Virginia, where we will be joined by four other teams as we explore two off-road parks, Burning Rock and Bear Wallow on the Hatfield-McCoy trail system. And now we're about to cross the state line into West Virginia. This is Power Nation on the road, XOR Adventure Ride 4, wheeling in West Virginia. Oh, yeah! Woo! We have arrived along with our fellow off-roaders at our first stop, Burning Rock Off-Road Park near Sophia, West Virginia. We're hauling the XOR JL in one of the two ATVs we borrow from Adrenaline Cycle in London, Kentucky. Inside the enclosed trailer is the General Tire Tacoma built on XOR. We've got some serious rigs here and we will show you each of them later in the show. Let's meet the teams on this ride. First up, it's Jeremy from XOR, LT from Truck Tech, and me in the XOR built 2018 JL riding on 37 inch Generals with an Edelbrock Supercharger. From Rusty's Off Road, it's company founder Rusty Migas in a 2019 JL featuring his 3 and 3 quarter inch lift and the four cylinder turbo hybrid engine option. From Dana Spicer, it's Randall Spear, the senior manager for Dana Performance, driving the 2018 Dana Advantech JL. And he's giving us the iconic Dana Diamond right here. From General Tire, it's Corey Vassieri and Tony Talbert wheeling in our 2001 Tacoma that's riding on 37 inch General ATX tires with a solid front axle and a custom three link suspension. And from Amsoil, it's off-road racer, now turns trail rider, Scott Douglas and his co-driver Len Groom in a 2018 Jeep JL, which is also powered by the four-cylinder turbo hybrid. And we all think Scott is going to be the wild card in this group. A professional off-road racer, we're sure he's going to be chomping at the bit to pass all of us on the trails. And we're all going to have to keep our eyes on him. teams head out for the first run, it's a good idea to check out what we might face on the trail. The map gives you a great view of what's in store for us at Burning Rock, which sits on 10,000 acres with 142 miles of trails. Here's Austin. We're assembled at the start of Trail 12. Jeremy and LT is going to lead this group up this three mile trail. Looks like I better find me a ride. Riding with you, brother man. Now that Austin has found a ride, LT and I lead the pack down what is a really steep grade that leads to a very steep incline. Everyone is lining up behind us to make their first run. We're followed by the Dana rig and then Rusty. There's over 40 years of experience riding in that JL. Then Scott and Len in the Amsoil JL bringing up the rear. We don't expect them to hang back for too long. We're gonna see what Jeremy does here. Watch, you watching? With all eyes on us, we're in the middle of our hill climb and our Jeep JL is running flawlessly. You can see Rusty's, General Tire, and the Amsoil rigs still marching down the steep incline. Raise this bungee. Culvert. And on board the XOR machine, we summit. Jog to the right, see that? Mm -hmm. Just make sure you don't cut too tight to the bushes, hey? Len is telling Scott how we went up. 
Rusty is now starting his climb. Randall finishes his march to the top. Then back to Rusty on the way up. Right here, you can hear Rusty using high RPM and low gear reduction to crest the hill. Tell you what, it is super impressive standing at the top of this climb. When you're going up it, it doesn't seem that steep, but from here, it's a totally new perspective. It's a ways down the Cory and Tony in the Tacoma, and it's Scott and Lynn crossing the culvert to start their climb. Speed up right through here. The General Tires Tacoma makes the summit followed very closely by the Amsoil JL. Everyone has made it so far. And coming up, we're headed to our first obstacle of the day. We'll see how our teams do in the Rock Garden. Plus, we'll go underground and visit a once real working coal mine when Power Nation on the Road continues. Power Nation on the Road is brought to you by General Tire, by Dana, and by Rusty's Off-Road Products. That's a gorgeous view of the Appalachian Mountains. Welcome back to XOR Adventure Ride 4, Wheeling in West Virginia. Jeremy and LT are leading the teams through the heart of coal country here in Sophia, West Virginia. Rando is following us in his Dana Jeep. Then it's Rusty and the Rusty's Off-Road Products JL with Corey and Tony in the General Tires Tacoma, and then Scott and Lynn in the Amsoil JL. Our trails are taking us over reclaimed surface mines and deep mines. Looking around, you would never know it. We're headed to our first obstacle, but since there was some heavy rains here recently, like any child, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with the puddles. Everybody gets that, right? So we're gonna torture this poor little GoPro. Look at this little fun thing right here. I like it. <laughs> I got a little deep, too. Not bad at all. Rusty decided to give the little guy a break. Now that we got that out of our system, let's take a closer look at Rusty Migas, the man behind Rusty's off-road products. His 2018 JL is complete with, of course, Rusty's off-road products, including suspension, skid plates, and rock rails. It's rolling on 37-inch general tires, and Rusty did opt for the four-cylinder turbo engine. Probably first started going off-road, and when I was probably only about 12 with some, you know, kin folks and some other friends, and I was just hooked, had to do it. I just, it was just something about getting out there and getting out on the trail and just riding and seeing if you could get over different obstacles and, and you know, go through the creeks and climb the rocks and nobody out there to tell you what to do. You can just get out there and just ride. With his love for wheeling and not being able to find the parts he needed, over 30 years ago, he created Rusty's Off-Road Products. What started out small has now grown into an international company. For years, we were just a regular, I would say, four-wheel drive shop. You know, service, maintenance, putting on new accessories and stuff like that. And then we couldn't get a lot of the parts. There were just things that we knew we needed and, and couldn't get them. Nobody offered them. So we started, you know, building and designing our own parts. And now with the introduction of the new Jeep JL, Rusty's Off-Road is gearing up to meet this new need. Well, there's been a lot of challenges, um, you know, as far as doing the suspension. You know, it was totally different than the prior vehicle, the JK. It looked a lot alike, but nothing even crossed over. Uh, doing, getting the springs and the shocks and getting all the valving and the spring rates, doing all this was uh, a very time consuming and a lot of hard work. I'm real happy. It, we're, still, we're still testing things. That's one of the reasons we're out here in West Virginia, Wayland, is 
you know, I, we love to come out here and wheel and, and plus, you know, it helps us test the parts. There's over 40 years of experience sitting alongside of me in that JL. And Rusty has been a great partner and friend to us for a long time, and I was thrilled to ride along with him. All right, we come to our first obstacle, Bevel's Playground. This rock garden is going to be a great test of suspension, tires, and most of all, patience. Driver, driver, ease up, Scott. Driver, driver, a little bit driver. Come on, come on. Little driver, little more driver. Hold right there. Come on. Now, passenger. Just gonna do this. One. Remember one thing. Huh? I've never done it. Yeah, I know, but you're you're pro. <laughs> Driver, 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 full driver. Great, hold it, hold it. Great. That ain't so easy. With the rock garden behind us, it was time for a little history pit stop. Hello, gentlemen. Howdy. Welcome to the Tams number two mine here on the Beaver Coal property. This mine is a drift mine, which means that they came from the surface here and went straight into the mountainside. What you have is two openings, and that's what they use to access the coal. The coal's only about 42 inches high, but these entries lead to an extensive network of more entries and probably goes back about two miles or so. This coal was mined uh, back in the 30s and 40s. Uh, if you come up closer to the openings, you can actually feel some of the natural ventilation that's underground. The, uh, the air, the air temperature year round is typically 50 degrees, and we're feeling part of that come out here right now. And coming up, we'll wrap up our stay at Burning Rock with an incredible hill climb when XOR Adventure Ride 4 Wheeling in West Virginia continues. Welcome back to XOR Adventure Ride 4, Wheeling of West Virginia. I hitched a ride with Randall Spear in the Dana Spicer JL. We're in Burning Rock headed to our second trail, and that's Trail P. It might be just slightly different than the previous one, maybe with a little elevation. Randall, what's your thoughts, man? How you been feeling about this ride so far? Yeah, I've, I've never been to Burning Rock, and I'm glad I'm here. This place is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of history here too, kind of like an archaeology with all the history from the coal mines. And there's some pretty cool trails to run, so I'm really excited to hit this next trail. Here it's, uh, it's a little more uh, technical, and that's probably going to mean a lot more fun. We're having a blast here. Jeremy, LT, what are you guys thinking of there? That's right, Austin. So far, the trails have been pretty exciting, but not very extreme. So we're going to take care of that and give these guys something that will really challenge their machines. So we're going to go hill climbing. That's right. We're going to end up traveling, hopefully, well, not quite straight up, but we're going up about 800 feet. And I guess the big challenge is, is well, getting from where we're sitting to well, what's ahead of us. Because what they don't know is this is a loop, and the only way out is up. <laughs> I don't know, Rusty. Give us some words of advice. We gotta go climb it. <laughs> Come on, Jeremy. It's all you, buddy. Too high, right? Do we have an affirmative from the camera crew? Any advice? You want to be in too high on this one. Too high. Keep the wheel spinning. It might be too high. Don't come, <laughs> don't come back down backwards. Yeah, there's, a, there's no going back. Austin, what do you think? They're not going to make it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so with that vote of confidence, LT and I start our run. It'll get a lot steeper than what it looks right now. Oh man. Yeah, Skid so bad. Pete, pedal. Dude, those tires are biting in. Yeah, really you know what? Airing down. This is a perfect example of why you lower the air pressure in your tires when you drive off-road. The sidewalls can flex and really bite down into the dirt. From the drone, as we're in our run, you don't really see the elevation. But trust me, we're pulling hard. Next up is Randall in the Dana Spicer Advantech 44 JL starting his climb. With the GoPro taking a beating like a Flintstones car wash, this is extremely deceptive. You guys just can't see how steep this really is. That was amazing. That was a lot. That was the most fun we've had today. That was a great climb, little transition there. So you took a break for a second before you hit the next elevation change. Lots of loose rock and dirt to contend with. Keep your revs, you know, constant. A little spin here and there, and we made it up. So a lot of fun. I want to go do it again. Up next, here comes Rusty taking his shot up the hill climb. Rusty's just calm and cool. Instead of getting on the throttle, he's just letting his Jeep do its thing. Uh, we started off just with some just winding forest trails, real pretty, real green. And all of a sudden, we turned left, and it almost went straight up. I think, it, I think on the kilometer it was 30 degrees, and just rutted up, and slate rock, and uh, it was, that was a good climb. That's a great look at the Grabber ATX. And this one is attached to the General Tires Tacoma, which is driven by Corey and Tony. The Tacoma sits quite a bit taller than the Jeeps, but it still fits into this crowd because it's running that JK front axle. And it's got no problem making it to the top. Climb right at the start. You have to kind of go a little bit offline to head up to get the tires to bite. Uh, Tony was uh, hollering at me to go right, go left, and I'm waiting for the tires to bite as we're kind of getting up the hill, going left and going right, bouncing back and forth in the ruts. Uh, it was crazy. You just got to keep your foot in it, get to the top. And finally, Scott and Landon, the Amsoil rig. Let's watch how the professional racer climbs up this hill. We're all enjoying watching Scott Douglas because of his years of off-road racing experience. And now he's transitioning that into wheeling, and he's doing a great job. I was telling Len there, and we were looking up at that big obstacle and everything. It's just like being lined up with, with 25 trucks at Crandon, and you're looking down at that turn one, and you know that if everything goes right, you're going to be first into that turn. Everything's going to be good. If it goes bad, you're going to be on your lid. Same thing with this hill. It's like you better do it right, and you better get it right the first time. So we had a blast, and she crawled right up there. Mm. Sophisticated water for sophisticated trail and sophisticated Jeep parts. Sophisticated caffeine at elevation. We made it! <laughs> <laughs> it was a sense of accomplishment. And now as we head out, LT and I lead the teams to our final spot. But first, let's take a minute to visit with Randall Spear from Dana, a true veteran of these trail rides. I've been riding with Randall, and let me tell you firsthand, he is one classy dude. This year, he's in the 2018 Jeep Advantech JL with all the Dana goodies. Plus coilover suspension, custom bumpers and sliders, and of course, bead locks with 37s. The new JL is awesome, right? It's, it's a great um, innovation from Jeep. I mean, there's subtle changes, but they really change the handling of the Jeep, the way it performs, the way it feels, a lot more creature comforts inside and it gives us a great base to work with. So all of our aftermarket components fit really well, and it really makes it a great off-road vehicle. We have to test our products. I mean, we have great engineers, we have great modeling, we test these things you know, virtually, but when you put them into the real world, you can't account for everything. So when you get out on the trail, you learn a lot because you see what people do that maybe you didn't really realize could happen. 
and that, then you can take that back and you can put it back into the modeling simulation and make sure that you're clear, you know you're covered for certain situations that can happen on the trail because you're not driving on the road you're driving off road we've got brand new dana 44 advantech axles in the front we've got an upgraded axle with thicker tubes thicker brackets it's got a locker it's got an iron diff cover on it it's got your choice of gear in it and then in the rear we've used spicer advantech gearing so that we match the tire size 37 inch tires to the ring gear size so that you can continue to still use your eight-speed transmission when you go out and buy your new jl you're getting dana 44 advantech axles this is awesome i mean you you pinch yourself at times that you're actually going out and you know testing vehicles and still having fun you have to enjoy it if you don't enjoy it you know it's just it's another job so you know i'm i'm lucky that i get to experience off-roading with a bunch of other guys that love off-roading, guys and girls that love off-roading, and I've got great products, and it really makes my job enjoyable. Randall is a longtime wheeler and a lot of fun to be around. We love having him with us. Let's continue as we wrap up our time at Burning Rock. We want to give them a special thanks for rolling out the red carpet for us. They took really good care of our crew. And you'd never know it, but we're on top of an old strip mine, and the view is amazing. West Virginia State slogan is almost heaven, and we're definitely starting to see why. Unbelievable. Still to come on XOR Adventure Ride 4, we head to the Bear Wallow Trails, a part of the Hatfield-McCoy Trail System. But first, a stop at what was once a working coal mine back in the 1890s. Stay with us. Welcome back to the XOR Adventure Ride 4, Wheeling in West Virginia. Coal has played a huge part in the history of the state and we've made our way to the town of Beckley. All of us are about to get an education on this industry and the role it played in our country's growth. Here's Austin. Welcome to the Beckley Exhibition Coal Mine. We're about to explore which was once a fully operational mine back in the late 1800s. Let's dive in. The Exhibition Coal Mine opened up in 1962, was part of New River Park, and I think that the mayor at the time was a visionary that he realized that this could really be something that would bring tourists into the community as well as let our local people know how important our coal heritage was to the area. So all these years the, the coal mine has grown. It started out as just a small tour where you go into the mine, and now as you can see there's also the coal camp and the mine museum all the things that are here on the property. So it's a really nice attraction for people to come and visit. If you guys are all ready to go, we'll go in underground and uh, we've got a few stops we're gonna stop and talk about uh, the way they, they mine coal here. Okay, this mine here that you're in here today, when we come in, we actually go out the back door, it's about 1,700 feet. Right here where you're sitting, that's got about 80 feet of rock over your head. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about how they actually mined back in 1890. We got little chips of carbide in the bottom. We put water here in the top. This is a carbide light. And like I say, if you go upstairs, you can see a bunch of these in one of the glass cases. All right, the carbide chips are there and the water's up here on top, so we're gonna fit, mix water with carbide. What happens? We get a settling gas. See that gas? So we're gonna trap that gas down here in the bottom. You guys, I need to turn the lights out, okay? Try to trap some of that gas in my hand. There we go. This is what you'd work with. This is gonna last probably about four hours. The coal miner would actually be laying on his side, he'd take his pick, and he's gonna pick in his coal seam. Coal is pretty soft, see how it busts up? Now. After he gets some busted up, he's gonna take his shovel and he's gonna shovel it up and put it in this car. This is a one-ton car. Now, when he gets it full, it's gonna be dragging the top of the mine. Now, the outside out here, it's just gonna be high enough just to have a pony come up here. They may have to tie a chain or something to pull this car out. This coal mine just made 20 cents. You gotta remember, when, when they hired me, they said, hey, we need to get five tons a day out of you. So that coal mine, he might have had to stay maybe 10 hours get his five tons. 
Now to the people who visit here from afar, they're always amazed once they go underground and they learn about the extraction of coal and then what happened with that coal. It provided the energy that fueled the economic growth of this country through the whole 20th century. People just don't really understand the importance of coal. We hear so much in the news about how bad fossil fuel and the carbon footprint is, but nobody really understands if we hadn't had it, we wouldn't be where we are today. As Tony steered our coal cars back up to the surface, remember, we're about 80 feet down and 1,700 feet into the mountain. I think all of us were happy to see daylight again, and we're all astonished in how difficult those early miners had it, just to make a little more than a dollar a day. It is amazing being down that mine. I mean, to think that those guys had to work in that small a space, and I can't even kneel that low. And then to do the manual labor they did for years, uh, the picking, the shoveling, the loading. Yeah, being down in the mine was incredible. In a lot of cramped conditions, I can't imagine working in such a tight space. Man, those guys had it tough. Hey, well, what do you say we had the bear wallow and the half view McCoy trail system and keep this party going? Let's I like it. it. Do some more wheels. That was amazing. Now, we're headed 70 miles west to the town of Logan, West Virginia home to our destination, the Bear Wallow Trails, part of the extensive Hatfield-McCoy trail system. It spans nine counties, it's mostly privately owned, and the landowners have given permission to all of us to use their land. Now it's ATV, UTV, and dirt bike friendly. However, the Bear Wallow Trail is the only trail that you can take 4x4 vehicles on, like our JL. Bear Wallow is 70 miles worth of trails, and it's celebrating its 20th anniversary. Now there's one catch here. Austin. We got all the teams lined up at the start of Trail 42, where once again, Jeremy and LT's leading the pack. One thing different here, I gotta mess up this hair. Everybody gotta wear helmets. Let's go wheeling. Thanks, Austin. And with our helmets on and LT behind the wheel, we're leading our teams into our first ride on the Bear Wallow Trail. Trail 42 is a really quick run to our main objective, Firecracker. While we're on our way there, what you'll first notice about Bear Wallow is how wide it is. These trails have been cut specifically to handle full-size rides like ours. This is in complete contrast to where we just came from, where the trails were very narrow. As we watch all the teams make their way past, from Dana, to Rusty's, to the General Tire Tacoma. To Scott Douglas and the Amsoil rig. And we're still gonna keep an eye on him. And up front, we're gonna pause for a minute to take on a passenger. How you ladies doing? What'd you get, kicked out of the other Jeep? <laughs> yep, it's a ride with you clown. Sounds All good. Right, let's do it. Dude, how's it been riding? You added the supercharger too, huh? Yeah, you know, right? We actually did add the supercharger. So we have Edelbrock's E-Force supercharger underneath the hood, and it's actually done a really good job. It's added a ton of power, and with the bigger tires, you know, we're running 37s now. It helps. It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely helping out. You know, the thing that I like most about having a supercharger under the hood is, well, number one, it just sets the Jeep apart from every other one here, but it's just the torque that's available instantly. You know, you just put your foot into it, and it's right there. Well, yeah, and you know, you're behind the wheel, you know, you can instantly feel it in your, well, pedal, I guess. Skinny pedal, they call yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, we got, what, 37s on here, a pretty heavy vehicle. You know, I'm not in low range. I'm just in high range, four-wheel drive. So, you know, it needs all that torque. That's exactly what that blower gives. We're having uh, an awful lot of fun out here, and that was definitely a good add-on to uh, just kind of bring this whole project together. Yeah, for sure. Well, bolting that supercharger on definitely made this build stand apart. And that's the cherry on top and needed, if you ask me. Yeah, right. All right, guys, so there's one test that you can do with a power adder that'll let you know if it works, right? And what's that? Standing on the throttle. You got to spool it up, right? W-O-T. There it is. There we go. Ha-ha! <laughs> that works in my book. Well, that adds on to it. That was fun, but coming up, firecracker plus wild and wonderful things to do in West Virginia. Welcome back to Power Nation on the Road. 
XOR Adventure Ride 4, wheeling in West Virginia. We're rolling through cold country on the Bear Wallow Trail System, part of the Hatfield McCoy Trails. LT is now behind the wheel of the XOR JL as we make our way through these wonderfully wide trail roads. Our four teams are doing great too. Randall Spear and the Dana Spicer JL, followed by Rusty Migas in the Rusty's Off-Road JL. The guys from General Tire, Corey Vassieri and Tony Talbert in the Tacoma. And the ever lurking Scott Douglas and Len Groom in the Amsoil JL. I think we've all been pleasantly surprised at not only how magnificent the scenery is here, but also the hospitality of the people of West Virginia. Any season, you can come to West Virginia. If it's wintertime, skiing is fabulous. If it's spring, hot water rafting, and you begin to ride the trail system, ATVing, UTVing, you can do hiking, biking, kayaking, canoeing. The list is pretty endless for, for whatever season that it is. Fairs, festivals, uh, there's always something going on in, in the state of West Virginia. We still mine coal, but tourism is be fast becoming the center for us in, in southern West Virginia. You know, with the eight systems, we have, you know, probably a thousand miles or more. It's the private landowners who make it all happen. Uh, every trail, every mile of trail is all on private individual property. And none of these individuals and none of these landowners make anything off of the trail system. It's strictly an uh, economic development project. Here in Logan, West Virginia, our Chief Logan Conference Center is built on reclaimed mine site. Uh, as quite a few of, um, of our businesses are, but we need some diversification and so we turn to tourism because they're gorgeous mountains and you actually get to spend the day just riding those mountains and, and seeing some of that forestry. So it's, it's a great experience. It is absolutely spectacular here in West Virginia and a big thanks to all the local residents who let us wheel here. Now, as we see Scott Douglas come into view, let's take a closer look at this professional off-road racer, now turned wheeler. Scott, along with Len Groom, are in the 2018 Amsoil Jeep JL with Rusty's off-road suspension, BFG's on Walker Evans wheels, and the turbo option. I started off-road racing in 1980 was my first truck race. 1990 was my first uh, full-time uh, doing it as a career, and I started doing it as a career in 1990, and I haven't had to look back, so it's been an awesome career. It's been really neat being able to have fantastic sponsors, and there again, I've had Amsoil since 2006. One of the real rewarding things about Amsoil has been the things that we've done, being able to, together, uh, not only winning races, and having a lot of success on the track. It's what we've done off the track, and that's what's really important. We were able to develop uh, a better severe gear for the rear ends through the racing, and, and, uh, and then the temperatures we put these race trucks through. We've had different converter temps uh, past 320 degrees, and the, and the tranny still held up, and the fluid has still been great. The transition is a twofold thing. Is one, I'm still going to be involved with Amsoil, which is, and I'm turning into more of an ambassador role from the motorsports role. I love talking about Amsoil. I really believe in the product. I want to stay involved as my career winds down. Well, this experience this week is more about proving the product than testing the product. So it's nice to get out, um, and hopefully Scott's going to do some things with the Jeep that puts him in some interesting situations and actually, you know, tests and proves some of the products, such as, you know, we'll put it in an odd position or get it off camber where, you know, the oil pan might not be picking up oil the whole time, or since it's hot out, you know, we'll get the temperatures up a little bit. And you got to understand when you put these Jeeps, at severe angles, you're starving the oil pan or you're starving the transmission pickup or you're, you're, you're tilting it way over and the, the, if you're tilting way over to the right, left wheel bearing is getting starved with fluid. And so you need a, a quality product to handle those kind of demands as well as the temperature. Like if you're trying to get up a rock and you're leaning on that torque converter with an automatic and you're trying not to spin those tires and just leaning on it and you do that for a minute or two, you have no idea what kind of trans temps it it draws up and so um, these vehicles are built pretty tough but the fluid you put in it is what makes them survive. Woo! Yeah!
It's hard to believe that was his first rock climb and he made it. We all love how Scott has embraced wheeling and he's doing great. But as you've seen, he's a professional off-road racer. And while hanging around in the back of the pack isn't going to work for him. And this is the moment we all knew was coming. You hear something? Holy cow. This guy. <laughs> what if he's in a rush? Ryan Myers. What the heck? Well, he is a racer. I'm going to go ride with him. Yeah, right? With Scott and Len now up front, check out what the town of Logan, West Virginia does for trail riders in any off-road vehicle. This is a very unique experience. Yeah, and that's, that's the neat thing. I mean, the, the towns who have, uh, the, the trails have been built around, they have embraced the riders. And it's very unique uh, because the towns have passed ordinances to where it allows the, the trail riders to come and ride the hardtops into the, the towns and patronize the local merchants. And uh, we have just about every town that the trail system connects to have passed ordinances to allow that to happen. So it's just a great thing for the local economy to be able to uh, take advantage of, of those opportunities. Coming up, when we get back to the Bear Wallow Trail, we'll face our last obstacle. Plus, the Hatfield-McCoy feud. They say the feud is over. We'll find out. Welcome back to the XOR Adventure Ride. We are on the Bear Wallow Trails about to attack a nasty little rock hill called Firecracker. And with one tire in air, taking the first shot is General Tire in the Tacoma with Tony Talbert behind the wheel and Corey Bassieri riding shotgun calling out the direction. Right now. A great look at the General Grabber ATX right there. Look how it compresses to get over that rock. And that's how you get up or down the hill by using less air. She goes back up on the side. Just bring the tires to the right a little bit so we'll get her out of this. Okay. We're up on the top. We're about to come over this other step right here. Here it comes. There it goes. Right on. All right. Okay, back end's gonna come right now. Perfect. That was simple enough. And they made it. Oh, that was fun. Let's take a closer look at General Tire. Corey and Tony are riding in the XOR built 2001 Toyota Tacoma, which is riding on 37 inch General Grabber ATX tires. The tire that's running on the Tacoma is the uh, General Grabber ATX. It's the next generation all-terrain tire. It was designed after the AT2. When somebody takes a tire off-road, they're looking for either handling, they're looking for sidewall flex, they're looking for bite in mud or rock, grip. We come out and we, we're enthusiasts ourselves. We've ridden other tires, we've ridden our tire. So we come out on, on a trail ride like this with the, the Grabber ATX and try to put it through its paces try to make sure that everything that we set out to do in that development design process is actually complete and that we can personally feel it. So before we even start creating a mold, uh, before we even start uh, any of the other marketing processes, we immediately go and benchmark all of the different tires that we're looking to uh, compete against, whether that be uh, dry handling, wet handling, wet braking, acceleration, and when we go through that process, we want to make sure that our tire is the best of the best. So we'll benchmark our tire against every other tire on the market and then force our product developers to meet a goal that exceeds every 100% of every tire. Our tagline is anywhere is possible. And we truly believe that with our tires that anywhere is possible. So that's why we come out. That's why we bring our tires out. That's why we bring rigs out like this, uh, the Coma with the ATXs, to put it through a pace that people might not want to take an all-terrain tire because we believe that anywhere is possible. Those guys have been a wealth of tire information for all of us. Now watch the veteran Rusty Migos and four times speed make the climb down the rock hill in 13 seconds. He makes everything look easy. This is Hatfield McCoy territory. And just our luck, 
Last night, we were invited to see a play on the famous Family Feud. Cleaned up and dressed up, we all headed to the Liz Spurlock Amphitheater where we met Nancy Hatfield, the great-great-granddaughter of Devil Ants Hatfield. The drama is called Deadly Divide, a play by Jeff Allen about the multi-generational fight, and everyone uses the same word about it. The story is sad. Uh, the story is, uh, it's real. Um, it's a story about two families uh, struggling and um, with, with different issues that uh, became, you know, uh, involved in a bitter, a bitter power struggle. Really, I mean, it's more of a power struggle than anything else. Um, it is tragic. Uh, there are a lot of lives that were lost. It was sad. It was really sad. You know, it, things happened back then, and it was lawless. The one lesson that we all learned is each side of the feud thought that they were in the right. So we need to look at this history and just find ways to all get along with each other. Now, back to Firecracker. All right, well, this is the first time we've seen it from the top in the vehicle, so. Passing your rear wheel, I think, is off the ground, but so far, so good. Obviously, a giant boulder there to yeah, your driver's thanks. side. <laughs> thanks, Russ. I don't know if you didn't see that or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was not quite so big, but uh, that one was Rusty dislodged it for you. Very perfectly by Rusty. Oh. We're going to bring that one with us, I think. Yep. Oh. There it goes. Hey, good thing you got bead locks. Yeah. <laughs> Sliders. Oh, All right. Deal, right? There's something dragging. I think you're good just to go over that rock. You'll hit the slider, but at this point, I think it's just kind of wherever, wherever Mother nature decides we're going to go yeah. is where we're going to go. Very little control right now. <laughs> now. I don't know why you would take a perfectly good brand new Jeep and subject it to this, but evidently this is fun. <laughs> I like it. We got this. This is, yeah. Heck, we could roll down the hill now. We'll be all right. No, don't say that. You roll one time. I'm going to bring it back up the hill. That definitely required patience to get through. And here's the big issue. Everyone who goes down this trail is moving rocks. So even if you site surveyed it earlier, it's different. And with one tire up in the air, here's Randall making his run. With the rock slipping and sliding, when we come back, we'll see if the Dana Rig can make it down. Power Nation on the Road is brought to you by Edelbrock and by Amsoil. Welcome back to the XOR Adventure Ride 4. Ooh. And we're watching Randall Spear in the Dana Advent Tech 44 crawl its way down Firecracker. And this is why you need skid plates and tough axle housings. Here we go. It's got to be easy on the brake. You can hear Randall talk. Easy on the brakes, because at times this is a barely controlled slide downhill. Just sliding all over. Whew. You heard the sigh of relief from Randall as he safely makes it down Firecracker. Oh, yeah. As we wrap up our time here in the heart of coal country on the Hatfield-McCoy trail system, Scott and Lynn and the Amsol JL start their attack on Firecrack. You're good, you're gonna have to call it because I can't see. There you go, Scott. Good call, good call, good call. Going down Firecracker is all about finesse. But then again, gravity and your rock sliders, well, they're gonna get you down too. right if you can. It's gonna bounce off that rock and come right. Oh, you got this. And it's gonna go fast now. Okay, there we go, good work. We got this, we're out. And 
and Scott and Len are down. Everybody made it, and it's time to call it a day and head back to the trailhead. Well, that about wraps this year's XOR Adventure Ride 4, Wheeling of West Virginia. We had a ton of fun, and I just want to say thank you to all the great folks out here at the Bear Wallow Hatfield McCoy Trails, and of course, our sponsors and our good friends. We couldn't have done it without you guys. After all, that's what Wheeling's all about. Great people, great times, and creating great memories. Well, I'm Austin LaFar. That about wraps this show, and we'll see you next time. Where are we going next time? Hawaii? Oh, Hawaii? Colder. Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> <laughs>